I mean, do you really think that Biden is Biden? I don't so think he does sniffing it from- kids is not okay. No, no, it's on the general. Yeah, there's, there's I'm being no- open. I don't think that's him. I think there's a mask and there's a guy behind mm. that mask. I don't think that's him. A Hamas terrorist, when they had the attack on October 7th, they attacked a family, but one of the grandmas was mm-hmm. Argentina. When she told them that she comes from where Messi's from, right? Uh-huh. Because of that, I mean, he's such a big name. They let him go. I'll give the credit to Javier where he's not as brash. So I like him for that. So some people say like, you know, he's a crazy MF because the way he talks and I'm like, he's just being honest. And that's what we need. We need less fluff and more straightforwardness. I've lost friends over this because I always talk about this and I think it's completely unacceptable what's happening. I don't think if you have a thing hanging from your legs, you should be allowed in a women's locker room or anywhere, you know, in a place that it's supposed to be a safe space for women. Well, how you doing, guys? Lou is here. We're back on the podcast. Uh, today we have Annie. Uh, as a guest, <laughs> say hi to her. Um, so Annie, I wanted to start a little bit with a little introduction. Yeah. She is the wife of uh, uh, Louis, who I had on his la- on my last podcast. Yep. And um, apart from being his wife, she has an interesting perspective. She's Argentinian. She's also an immigrant mm-hmm. to this country, and she also likes uh, you know to do tarot readings. Uh, she's a feminist, and we're going to talk about that more in a little bit, about what feminism means to her. Mm-hmm. Uh, so without any further introduction, welcome, Annie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for w- having welcome me. Welcome to the to the, to the the show that, you know, we're, we're, we're very, very small, but hopefully yeah. uh, with consistency and hard work, uh, maybe in a year or two, we can actually mm-hmm. be something. So I know how it is. I also have a podcast. You do as well. Yeah. In Spanish. (laughs) In Spanish. Well, whenever you want to host me, I'll be be more happy to. Yeah. I just had my first male um, guest and it was Louis. So we can have second Louis. (laughs) There you go. Louis back to back. (laughs) Louis back to back. I love that. (laughs) So talk talk a little bit uh, more about, uh, you know, who you are. Mm -hmm. Uh, How'd you get to this country, you know, and what are you doing right now as far as career and, and your focus? Perfect. So I'm from Argentina, born and raised. Argentina hasta la medula. Um, I moved to the U.S. when I was tw- almost 21. Um, I did because I wanted like to have experiences, right? I was al- always very curious. At 20, I was like a- an old lady. Like I-, I don't feel like I was the typical 20-year-old. Um, so I basically told my family like, hey, I want to move to Italy. Long story short, I- that didn't work. Um, and then I got the opportunity to move here and I was like let's do it I moved to Washington DC it was kind of boring um but you know really and what's well in what sense uh, I just I didn't click with the people there they were like you know like two gringos for for me coming from Argentina right like it was a big cultural shock, and I moved here by myself, no family, no friends, no nothing. How how is it living in Argentina? Is you know I've always heard Argentina is like a also a developed country. They have kind of like yeah a lot of the stuff, but you know with like the the politics, mm-hmm. um, in particular, I've seen yeah. you know like a cultural shift with Javier Milani. Yeah, Milani. Milani, sorry, <laughs> Milani. Yeah. I don't know if you're a fan of his or not. Um, I mean, like. I don't completely trust anyone in politics because I studied uh, political science back in Argentina, so I know how it works. And you can't like, you can't completely know what his intentions really are, but I do support mostly what he's doing. Yeah. Do you support like his budget cuts? Um, Yeah, I think it's the only way. Yeah. I think it's the only way uh, moving forward. I think you have to do what you have to do sometimes and like you know my family's there all my friends are there and they're like really struggling financially right now i mean they're they're doing okay right they they have food to eat they have yeah, jobs. The basic necessities i always say that argentinians don't really know what poverty means um because we years back we had like this societal level that was like not that bad let's say so we had like a strong middle class that right now has been destroyed. 
So right now you're either rich or you're poor. You're very poor, yeah. And that's what socialism does, right? Mm -hmm. That's I mean, what I saw happening. And that's why I always, um, I also decided to leave because I was like, this ship is about to sink. And I was like, I'm, I'm out. <laughs> and do, do you think somewhere like Javier is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, apart from obviously you don't trust politicians. I, I think most 100%. people nowadays don't trust politicians. Right. But do you see him as a, as a typical politician? Because he seems more like, like a Trump where, yeah. you know, he, you know, I'll give the credit to Javier where he's not as brash mm -hmm. as Trump. Mm -hmm. Like he, he, yeah. he is, <laughs> he is. In the political theater, <laughs> yeah. but I don't know if you saw his uh, his uh, UN speech, yeah. where he went after you know the establishment mm -hmm. and the, the yeah. globalists. Yeah, I thought that was um, amazing. Yeah. I thought it was amazing too because yeah. he is very very well spoken. Like yeah. his thoughts when he wants to give a, mm -hmm. a, a very a thoughtful Thought, discussion. Yeah, he's so smart. He's extremely good. He's so smart. And I admire know, him for his pitch and the way he communicates and I love honesty. And so I like him for that. So some people say like, you know, he's a crazy MF because the way he talks and I'm like, he's just being honest. And that's what we need. We need I'm, less fluff and more straightforwardness. And I think that's also the, because the political landscape has shifted where it was more before it was about being clean and polite yeah. and yeah. have a message. Right. Right. Where now where everybody's realizing, oh, these polite you know, MFers. That's nowhere. Yeah. No, they're not getting in this any, in, anywhere. They're filling their pockets up, tricking yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. and now. With nice words. Correct. Yeah. And now pol politicians now, I feel like more than ever, are becoming more like celebrities where if you don't have that it factor, mm -hmm. you know, you're yeah. just right. not going to get elected. You know, mm -hmm. it's like mm -hmm. before Trump and after Trump. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he changed everything. That was uh, before and after. Do you ever see yourself moving back to Argentina? I do. I do. You do? Yeah. Yeah. I love the culture, um, most of all. And it's a beautiful country. And I just love that it's a mix, like so many cultures coexisting. I never realized how culturally rich it was until I moved here and I lived in certain areas. Where have you lived here other than Miami? Uh, Miami, Washington, D.C., some parts, uh, parts of Maryland and... Jersey City. Okay, so a little bit, a little bit over in the U.S. Yeah, yeah, Where do and you I, like I've the traveled most? like all over the country. Uh, it's a beautiful country, but Argentina, like, no le envidia nada. I wish I could say the same about my country. Um, not, not in the natural beauty. It's just uh, the system is absolute yeah. crap, and yeah, yeah. I mean, socialism, right? Yeah, that's what I saw happening. And the thing is, like, socialism, they know how to get to people through a polite and hopeful speech but that's all it is is a puro show so that's why i like Millet because he's not about that no and I, and, I, and i will have to say i mean for somebody that seems to have come out of nowhere because that's what, right. it, that's what it feels like with right. him mm -hmm. that he comes out of nowhere I don't think it's just like the, the Trump type of politics. Mm -hmm. I also think the way he speaks, he just he's a very well prepared individual. Mm -hmm. You can mm -hmm. tell. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's so so I do see a good future for Argentina. That's why I asked you. Yeah. Now I will you, move back. Yeah. You will move back. Yeah. You know, one of the things I saw, and I also I have this experience working with Argentinians before. Mm -hmm. you now Argentinians are very, very prideful people, extremely. <laughs> you know, so it's one of those things where they're a little bit combatant. If you don't if you disagree with them. They will fight tooth and nail until, you know, you either agree with them or it's a war, <laughs> you know. And why do you think that is that Argentinians like to combat not only with anybody, but also within themselves? You know, like you said, Argentinians can be their, their own biggest enemy. Why is that? Oh, I think it's the honestly, the Italian blood. We love fighting. It's it's so funny. So whenever I go back home, whenever I'm like at the airport Wait, waiting for my flight and there are like Argentinians around. I always think that they're fighting. Mm. And then I started listening and they're not fighting. It's just That's, how they talk. It's how we talk. And we come off as rude or extremely prideful, but that's the way we are. Like we have strong blood and we are very like heated. <laughs> we're very passionate. I think we're like one of the most passionate countries ever. I would say ever. from the people of Maya. And yeah, I've always wondered why do you guys, what do you guys have against Uruguay? 
<laughs> I was wondering. This is a real question. Why do Argentinians I mean, have this they, have they were oh, part of Argentina. It. And now, right now, the beef is that Uruguayans claim that the things are Argentinian are actually theirs. And it's funny because they came from us. They like liberated. So it's like, no, mate is not yours. Dulce leche is not yours. It's ours. Also, they claim everything, right? Like we are the copycats and they are the, the OGs. And it's like, no. <laughs> but I never but understood that. We don't that hate mean. Uruguayans though. We hate Chileans. Chileans. Why is that? <laughs> I mean, not me. <laughs> no, I'm saying culture. I, I don't understand. I just, I, because I, I mean. Of the, because of a war, uh, they basically betrayed us and they helped uh, the UK. So they didn't have a way to get to Argentina because it was so far away. So they were like, basically, you can use our land and land here and get gas for your whatever and then go to the Falkland Islands. Which I'm was, sure if, yeah. if for some reason any Chilean is watching this, you know, leave us we a comment. You guys. Do you think it's true or not? You know, I, I always, I let's always leave find it, it behind. <laughs> let's leave it behind. I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually a person who believes when, uh, you know, when you leave things behind, it's just like leaving dirt to yeah. be dug up later, like, you know, yeah. problems for later. But I mean, like, you know, so mean, so many Argentinian people died in that war and they were like 17 years old, 18 years old. And if it wasn't for, it was the government after all, it wasn't the people. That's why, what I mean, it doesn't make sense. But so they also don't like us. So it's, it's back and forth. I would say it's not Argentinians it's not liking them. It's, it's mutual. Um, and I've met some Chileans and they were like pretty rude to me for no reason. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, oh, you know, such a shame that Argentina is doing so badly, but Thank God we're doing so well. Oh, you guys, it must suck to be you. And I was like, what are you saying, lady? It's <laughs> like yeah. the pride thing. It's, it's like, like a pride thing. Yeah. It's like, you know, obviously soccer in Argentina is like, you know, if if you are a good soccer star in Argentina, you might as well be God, you know, because that's, that's literally what it was. I saw this article on the news. Mm -hmm. It was like two or three weeks ago that uh, a Hamas terrorist, mm -hmm. right, when they had the attack on October 7th, mm -hmm. they they attacked a family, but one of the grandmas was mm -hmm. Argentina. When she told them that she comes from where Messi's from, right? Uh -huh. Because of that, I mean, he's such a big name. They let him go. Can you what? pull this up? Pull it up. You, do you, this is a real fun story. Fact, I'm Th also from where Messi is from. So I would have been saved. <laughs> Literally, that that that's how that's how crazy this is. That a terrorist. Oh, you're from Messi. Okay, no problem. You're okay. You can you can let Did go. Did she say she was from the country or the town? Or from the city? Where, no, she said from where Messi's at, and she they let him go. And she get they even treated her like their own grandma and let her go. It's Ooh. the most wild thing. I had never heard something like that. I mean, Messi. <laughs> that's that's crazy. How much one person has that much power? He's amazing. <laughs> Little guy can do a lot. Um, right. kind of changing the topic a little bit, you know, yeah. one of the things that I, that I, you know, I interviewed your husband last time was about, you know, his, uh, proactive, you know, mm -hmm. uh, masculine, uh, work where he's working right. towards better men's health, mm -hmm. uh, better men's rights. And here you are on the opposite end where right. you're, you're uh, mm -hmm. a feminist looking to, mm -hmm. to help women. Now, yeah. Let's define what feminism means for you first, because I feel right. like every time somebody throws that word around, it has kind of like a negative connotation. Right. Even you know? for me, like I usually don't use that word for that same reason. For me, it means that we just were treated with respect and, you know, that we have opportunities. So right now in the U.S. or Argentina, I feel like women are doing like in the work aspect, they're doing amazing. Mm -hmm. But then when it comes to safety, that's where we still need fem feminism. Because it's still in like, sense? you know, that you might go to the supermarket and some guy rapes you or kills you. Um, and I've had some close encounters even here in the U.S. where I felt extremely threatened or scared for my life because of like, you know, toxic masculinity which makes men think that we're just a piece of meat and that they can like you know do the harm us basically but do you think that's toxic masculinity or just criminals i mean because i'll, I'll put it like this i it's, mean it's cultural no 
I think you it's think cool. it's a cult. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't disagree with you. Yeah, you know, just yeah. Like I, I mean, told you guys. It, it all starts with your mom, right? If your mom was not there for you, you might resent women, and for that same reason, when you grow up, um, sometimes it's your dad. Your dad treated your mom like a, you know. That's why I don't think it's a woman. I think it's men. And I'll disagree with you there. Yeah. I don't think if you had a, a good or bad mom really affects you as much as whether oh, or not does. you have a good dad. And I'll tell you why. Yeah. I mean, both are. I'll it, tell you why. The yeah. statistics say that mm -hmm. for the most part, single woman households mm -hmm. will create more single families in the future, more criminals in the future. Right. As opposed to single father households. Because men tend to be a lot more strict. Yeah. A lot more like military. This mm -hmm. is the rules, and mm -hmm. you're gonna get punished otherwise. As yeah. where women are, tend to be more soft. Yeah, that's just your nature, mm -hmm. and you want to coddle them and help them. But the yeah. truth is, many strong figures, or else you became you become criminals, mm -hmm. you become fuck ups, you know. Yeah, and so that's why, like, I yeah. kind of disagree with that. I really think every household needs a strong father. I agree. So the children can be in line. Yeah, and that mm -hmm. creates that. That culture you're talking about where yeah. men respect women. Exactly. You know, we don't have that that feeling of you being unsafe. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it really depends where we're at. You know, right now mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. this country, at least mm -hmm. in the U.S., mm -hmm. you know, feminism has taken into like this. No, other thing. I, I completely agree. That's why I said I don't like the word. I think like it did what it needed to do back then, which was getting our right to vote and to go to school or things like that. You know, that was very much needed. Um, but right now, I think it's gone too far. I, I agree with you on that. And also, I believe that. You need both. Like he was saying the other day, it's not about like becoming obsessed with the feminine or becoming obsessed with masculine, which has brought us here. I think it's about an equal dance where we both know our roles. Does what, make sense? what is the roles and what is the role of a woman nowadays? Ugh. That's a really good question. That's a great question. From well, a woman's perspective. From my perspective. So I I am starting a new project where I'm basically a feminine coach, um, where I teach women how to get back to their nature, basically, our essence. I don't think we come to this earth having a womb and having all of this to act like men. I think that's where we've gone wrong. Does it make sense? Lim I don't want to put words in your mouth. Um, Does that make sense? Like, I think we need to reclaim our femininity as women. But and what is that? And that's that's what right. I'm trying to say in, in your sense. Because yeah. from one camp, I, I feel like that's a problem with feminism nowadays. You guys, not you guys in that sense, or women collectively, at least mm -hmm. what it's perceived, mm -hmm. you want everything. You want to be masculine. You want to be feminine. You want the big job. And you don't want to do the hard job. You know, so yeah. it, it's you can't have everything, you know. No, I think I think women should have the right to choose. But for me, like having my my husband, like I don't want to compete against him. Does that make sense? Yeah, of course. And I think that's what causes like so much trouble in relationships. Because like if the woman is acting like a man, then what does the man do in their relationship? So that's what. That's my focus right now. And also like reclaiming our femininity, which means like slowing down, having more more time to be relaxed, which is the problem I see most in women. They are so stressed out. And I was there, like I was like missing patch, uh, patches of my hair. I was like so stressed out because I was trying to be a man. I didn't. Con I wasn't connected to my fe to my um, feminine energy, and I, and I and I think it's because also um, because women nowadays have to work more than ever. You know, right? And we women in the classical sense used to be more of of the caretaker of, of your kids, yeah. of the home, yeah. As opposed to now, women are really more in the work environment, even more than men. Sometimes I I, I yeah. talked about it with them. You know, yeah. Most of the most yeah. of the workers in my company mm -hmm. are women. Yeah. You know, most of the CEOs, the the high position women, and mm -hmm. it's not yeah. that they're there because they're there, yeah. they're yeah. there because they've earned it. Mm -hmm. You know, but how yeah. do you then have the patience, you know, to have to put up a hundred yeah. fires of work mm -hmm. and then also go home and then also have a masculine man who also wants you to act feminine and relaxed? That's the scam. Hmm? 
that's, that's a scam. That's a scam. I that's mean, scam. We, we, yeah. we've been scammed <laughs> in that sense. Like, yeah, now we got to do the men's work and also the women's work. Like, what? Now we have double the work? No wonder why we're so depressed and so masculinized. And it's it's such a shame because I don't believe that women are in their power when they're acting like a man. You were born a woman to be a woman, not to act like a man. So, yeah, I respect what any woman wants to do with their lives because I think you do deserve the right to choose, right? Mm -hmm. If you want to be a CEO, there's nothing wrong with that. But also, like, women like me, I don't want to be a CEO. Like, I want to have my own projects, which we're going to talk about, I'm sure. And just being in this more feminine flow, which is not force forceful, it's not so rigid. Like, I believe women, we should follow our cycles. And you, as men, you have a 24-hour cycle, which is amazing. And I'm so, like, envious. <laughs> yeah, we, we get over things fast, you know, right. for the most part. But women, like, we are um, we're ruled by the moon. You guys are ruled by the sun. We so have, let's talk about we that, have a I, long I, cycle. I, I, of I think we can talk about that. I mean, I'm, 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 I'll be honest with you. I don't believe in, in any of the... The terrorist or the what? Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> do you think terrorist? <laughs> not terrorist, terror reading. I know, I know. Uh, spirituals. You know, whenever I see somebody talk about Scorpio, this and that, again, this is my honest opinion. I'm nothing. Right. You're a guy. Enough. It's okay. I, I yeah. kind of like. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? You know, it's like, oh, you're a Virgo, Virgo so you're supposed to act the way. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? Well, you know, I know a lot it's, of people. It's not that simple. I act think... my way, and they're not even close to the sign. And sometimes yeah. I'll even do like like a little trick, mm -hmm. or I'll be like, "No, I'm this sign." And she's like, "Of course, because this is, I lied to you. It's actually this." So, w what is what is that all about? <laughs> why why are people so into these things? Well, there is a lot of misinformation. So, what you're talking about is only a small percentage of what. Um, astrology has to say. So in order to talk about astrology, you need to see your full um, natal chart, which is so complex. And there will be no one like you. And that's why you're saying what you're saying. Like, oh, I know this. I know Jorge. And he's also in blah, blah, blah. But he's nothing like me. Because like, no, we're all unique. So that's kind of BS, what you're saying when people are like, oh, you're this, so you have to be this way. Um, it's a little, like, childish, and, like, it's not what astrology really is. Uh, so in order to know how you are based on astrology, you should go to an astrologer and have that read for you. It's so complex, really. Like, I've been studying this for so many years, and I'm still, like, 10% in. But, <laughs> but again, obviously, if it's something that requires a lot of study, right, it's kind of hard to condense into a like a small segment, right. But if you could, if, if I, you can yeah. encompass it and say into a thirty second to a minute, why exactly are some people so attracted to astrology, to tarot readings, to as as kind of George put it in the outlines for the notes, like almost like witchcraft. And he didn't say witchcraft, but he said. Uh, would yeah. you consider yourself a witch? Um, mm -hmm. What what exactly like uh, is a witch uh, appeals? You know, why why does it appeal to you so much? Um, I think it depends on like what side of your brain you're more connected to. Um, so I think some people are more on this side of the brain, and then people like you are more left left side of the brain, and that's I think that's the main difference. Also. A witch means you love nature and you're connected to nature. And there is lots of misconceptions of what it means to be a witch when it just means that you are a nature so, but loving. But you will consider yourself a witch? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Since I don't I want see... any curses or spells on me after we leave here, okay? Of course not. I'm, I'm a nice like, guy. Look, I have my crystals. <laughs> I only brought my she crystals. She brought the rocks. <laughs> she brought <laughs> <laughs> Again, of course, it's, they keep it's, it grounded. No, no, no. I, I always say, you know, p people, the wonderful thing about life, and especially if, if you know, you're an adult that understands the right for people to live and uh, and believe what they want. Exactly. You know, is that yeah. it's okay for you to believe in that. And it's okay for me to believe what I believe. Absolutely. You know, I, I think for the majority of people, it just sounds like nonsense. And I'll be honest mm -hmm. with you. Um, yeah. 
because maybe you're right. Maybe we haven't seen really, you know, what are the real benefits? Right. It really feels from, again, from my perspective, mm -hmm. you know, that it's it's more a ploy for, to sell crap. Uh, and at the same time, it feels like I call George this all the time. I'm sorry, George. It kind of feels a little hippie, you know, where it's like, all right, most of the people who are in that are either women for the most part. Or, you know, people who are considered more hippie, drug users. Again, this is this is what I yeah. what I what I make of that. Yeah. I could be completely wrong. Yeah. You know, so that's yeah. why I ask, what exactly attracts you other than, than you know, uh the spiritual sense, what attracts you, what information have you gathered from it that's told you this is this is this is exactly what I should be doing? Well, first of all, um I been very psychic since I was a little girl. So it, it's not like I started two years ago when this became like super mainstream. Because nowadays, yeah, it, I got to be with you. There are so many like little croppers. You know, even if you go to a spa, the yeah. water has rocks. It, it, you know, it's like, what the hell is this? There's nothing. That doesn't matter. <laughs> I mean, like people pretending to know about this stuff. That's what I'm talking about. The rocks, they're, they don't do nothing. Like, it it's your intention and again i have a lot of information we could be here for hours talking about crystals and all of this but it's been my personal experience since i was like maybe five years old that's when i had my first experience i i remember and since then yeah what type of experience uh well when i was a little girl i could see like ghosts and stuff and do you believe ghosts are real not in the sense of like movies, no. I think they are just like trapped energy of souls who couldn't cross. And I do believe that they can like stay in a place um, trapped until they are sent to the light. Um, but yeah, eventually I grew up and I was like, I don't like this. Like, I don't want to see anything. I, I'm a scary guy. So I was like, please, I know this is supposed to be a gift, but take it away. Take it away. I don't want it. <laughs> Well, and then for, for me yeah. thankfully that's never been the case for me it's been the other way around it's been fighting the demons myself you know it's oh, like yeah yeah it's like and how so, do i how do i how do i stay concentrated on one thing um do you think more people nowadays are are looking for that spiritual connection or do yeah. you feel like it's it's now we're so far from it that you know it's kind of hard to get back to it and i'll i'll say this you know, from my experience dealing with people like Christians, Muslims, mm -hmm. I only really see right now mm -hmm. the only population that's really devout, mm -hmm. you know, Muslims, Muslims, the only ones. I know. Uh, even even Jewish people, I don't even see them. Obviously, mm -hmm. I have a lot of Jewish people I know, and they're very devout to the study of it. But mm -hmm. I feel like even them, a lot of the population mm -hmm. have broken away with the actual mm -hmm. principles of the religion. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, do you see the, like a spiritual reawakening, you know, at least for you yeah. from this sense? Or yeah, do you yeah, feel yeah. like we're losing that connection with, with the spiritual? No, I think we're just starting to to have a an awakening as a society. And I think it's just starting out. But like I said, there is a lot of bullcrap when it comes to it. Like when I first started like getting into groups and stuff, I was like, oh, this is so cool. There are so many people like me who like the same stuff. And once I get to know them, it's like, no, like you're just full of shit. So there's a lot of that. Um, you can tell it's full of shit just by having a real conversation. Exactly. That's why I always say I prefer to just say what I think right yeah. away. Yeah. And kind of bullcrap you because it you lose credibility mm -hmm. and trust, mm -hmm. you know. So I, mm -hmm. you know, it's better just, you know, and mm -hmm. you know, kind of going back to the feminism thing. I, I really, I'm really fascinated with the feminism thing, you know. In, in which sense? In particular, women's rights. Mm -hmm. You know, you were talking about how nowadays we've gone so far, you know, yeah. with feminism. Yeah. Then it's no longer about being equal. Now it feels like it's it's really about being superior. Mm -hmm. You know, superiority or the inequality. And mm -hmm. maybe this is a little bit of a hot topic. It really is. Um, mm -hmm. But what do you think about the transgender community and the women spaces? Because I feel like that's a big problem mm -hmm. for women in particular. And I'll tell you why. Uh, as a man and as a person who believes anybody should be whoever they want to be, 
because I agree with that. Mm-hmm. You know, I yeah. I have I have I have an uncle who's gay. He has a partner. It doesn't matter mm-hmm. for me. Mm-hmm. It really doesn't matter. Yeah. But it feels like right now with the transgender community and the LGBT community, mm-hmm. more than anything is an attack on women. I'll, and again, yeah, I'm more than happy to be criticized, be spoken to that I'm wrong. You know, it feels like for the most part. Men now feel dis- disfranchised because that's what's happening. Mm-hmm. And especially in this country, men are being attacked. We're no longer allowed to. Mm-hmm. Masculine is bad. Unless it's a woman. <laughs> if you're a woman who's masculine, that's okay. Yeah. But if yeah. you're a man who's masculine, <laughs> then you're a chauvinist. Then you're a misogynist. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. You can't be masculine mm-hmm. anymore. Mm-hmm. So now it feels like not everyone. Again, I know some transgender people who are actually, they feel that way. Mm-hmm. But. It feels like a lot of men becoming transgender mm-hmm. are doing it as an advantage. Yeah. And it's like in it's, sports. In sports. I, mm-hmm. I saw, I don't know if you if you guys are on Twitter or not. Yeah. I'm on Twitter all the time. There's a big push right now against Planet Fitness. Have you seen the story? No. All right. So I suggest you guys research it. So Planet Fitness in Alaska, two days mm-hmm. ago, or mm-hmm. sorry, five days ago, um, one of its members, a woman, mm-hmm was super insulted because there was a man in the locker room shaving mm-hmm. in front of a 12-year-old girl. Oh, no. And she took a picture of it, posted online. It blew up. They lost mm-hmm. over $400 million in market cap over uh, in less than a week. And instead of, like, siding with the woman, they canceled her membership and doubled down. <laughs> wow. So that's one of the stories among a million other stories. You know, and again, it's a weird thing where – Right, how do you respect people who actually want to be transgender, who are actually are mm-hmm. going through this thing, which in my opinion, for the most part, and this is not a dig on anybody, I really think transgender is being treated nowadays as, as something that instead of being like a mental problem, which I really feel like mm-hmm. if you have to chop off any parts, if you have to completely transform your body, there's something wrong. You know, at the end of the day, the most beautiful thing is for you to accept who you are. I mean, we're talking about body positivity, Mm -hmm. about accepting yourself. Mm -hmm. What more is Mm -hmm. it that you to accept exactly who you Mm -hmm. are and who you came out Mm -hmm. as? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I completely agree. And so the question being for a woman, how do you guys, you know, survive Mm -hmm. this, this, this wave? I've. And stay feminine when now you're being told to go to work. You have to be the boss mm-hmm. bitch. And at the same time, now you have to accept men transitioning to women. Yeah, what do you do? I, I've, I've, lost, I've lost friends over this because I always talk about this. And I think it's completely unacceptable what's happening. Um, I don't think if you have a thing hanging from your legs, you should be allowed in a women's locker room or anywhere, you know, in a place that it's supposed to be a safe space for women. Um, and especially you were, you were talking about not feeling safe going to a supermarket. Right. Um, you know, the reason why I think you don't feel safe is because obviously men have more strength. Mm-hmm. Any regular man can come up and, and attack you and you can't defend yourself mm-hmm. unless you have a weapon or something, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah. And so and now people don't care. Like, it's 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 almost crazy, and now they can also go into your bathroom just because you know. I decide, yeah. you know, tomorrow I'm, I'm this guy. I work yeah. out and stuff. Tomorrow yeah, I want to yeah. go in your bathroom. I just identify, and you have to accept it. Yeah. yeah. What do you do? It's no, I'll like kick his ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Like no, sorry, but I I I would not comply with that, and I'll fight for that because I really believe it's wrong. So yeah. That's my that's my position. And like, and the reason I talk about they shouldn't it is, be allowed. you know, I have a daughter and mm-hmm. you know, I am again, I, I am I'm a I'm a person who's been to a lot of countries, a lot of cultures, but this just feels like something else. It feels almost like uh, it's being pushed. Insane. Yeah. Yeah, there's an agenda. There's a clear agenda yeah. and it's an agenda that doesn't make sense. You know, it's it's almost like I mean, a it's sick so agenda. well planned that it does make sense if you really look at what's underneath. So I think the plan is the agenda is to feminize men because you guys are the protectors. So what happens when the protectors and the providers are basically women, and then women are becoming men? What do you have then? You have an effed up society. That's powerless. 
And that's why I, I, I honestly, I, I didn't used to speak about these subjects. And I, th I think more than ever, you know, we need to be willing to sacrifice and be loud and, right. and, and concise about these topics. And confront. And concise. <laughs> and the reason why I say this is because, you know, nothing ever gets created by a coward. Right. I, I, nothing I gets ever solved <laughs> by people who are just waiting Compliant. to. Compliant. Correct. Mm -hmm. Um. And I really do see this as an as an issue for for women who really want to become mm -hmm. real feminists. Mm -hmm. You guys need to be loud yeah. and proud and not give an inch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, if I have to take <laughs> a a page out of uh, Javier <laughs> Millet's uh, "A la mierda con los zurdos," right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, to shit to the leftists. You know, um, I don't I don't think he means it that way. In and just like everybody in the left is bad. You know, I've had no. people on the left. I would say a la mierda con los degenerados. Los general, The degenerates. Sí. Yep. But what happens when the degenerates are running the zoo? We're, we're effed We're up. in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I'm, I'm, that's I'm, why I'm, I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm, you know, the reason I am not going to leave, and I'll tell you this, A, I will never go back to Cuba. No. <laughs> <laughs> Number one. Number two, I'm, I'm already... Set here. In a point, yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I feel you have American. Your roots here. I am not Cuban. Yeah, this I'm, is your country. You you need to stand up, stand up for your country. I mean, who else is going to do it if it's not you Americans? So, but are you a citizen of the United States? No. You're not a citizen. Mm -mm. I'm going to ask you this question. If you weren't a citizen, I mean, if you were a citizen, sorry. Right, right. Who would you vote for this coming election? Who I, I have no idea. Um, I mean, Trump, is he... Is he gonna be in the elections? Yeah. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Who else? Trump and Biden. That's basically. It. There is a third option, which is. I mean, uh, is this Robert Kennedy Jr.? Oh, um, I think he was. Yeah. But he's not gonna. He doesn't he, have enough I, of the vote at this um, point. Trump, obviously. Okay. So <laughs> Biden is. It keep, I, I say it, it like it's that the because the general team. <laughs> your, your husband, you know, he did say he's a Democrat. He doesn't know what to do, and I really, I really tell yeah. everybody, you know, all to my Democrat friends. You know, it doesn't matter if did you're he a Democrat. Or <laughs> uh, he did say yeah. he was a Democrat. Um, and I say like this, it, it, I don't think we should label ourselves as Democrat or Republicans. And I, I don't believe in that. It doesn't no, matter. Yeah, it's whoever's no. best for our country. Right. And Biden is, he's a degenerate. I mean, have I you seen I, the videos I, with kids? I, I the really way he sniffs kids, I'll, I'll, like I'll give him lock this. him up. I'll give him this. I don't think he's a degenerate. I just think he's an. You like really an don't old, think he is? I think he's an old grandpa who doesn't know where the hell he's at. And have you ever have you ever been around like at least no. for me? I have you ever been I around my, old people who? Yeah, who, yeah. And my my um great grandpa, he would like talk about cows. He was crazy. He was out of his mind. He would be like eating. Where are my cows? I need my cows. I don't. I don't That's think he a crazy does, person. I don't think he does Sniffing it from, kids is not okay. No, no. It's un degenerado. No, no. Maybe he was. Maybe he was. And now he can't he help is. himself. But I I think he does it because he doesn't know where the hell he's at. So I, I'll give him credit to this. I don't think he does it from a bad place. I just I don't think he's there, you know. And I also think, for the most part, I never see somebody as pure evil or pure good. I, I don't think anybody's pure anything. I mean, do you really think that Biden is Biden? In what sense? It's not him. And again, we can be as open here. Like, yeah, I'm being no open. I don't think that's him. I think there's a mask and there's a guy behind mm -hmm. that mask. I don't think that's him. No. I think it's him because if, or if, it's, you, can, it's if you can put a mask, a, it's either a clone or some weird shit. But it's not. But wouldn't you like, think if if he was a clone, at least they'd make him, you know, be able no, to answer I mean, speeches, it's, it's not, not fall on the plane. It's, it's not going to be perfect, right? It's not going to be perfect because it's, it's not real. I mean, there's something fishy. I, I can't like. I'm not, I won't agree I'm with gonna, you. I'm gonna put I, my. I don't, I don't. I don't think they've put a lizard person in Biden because if they would have, they've at least put a. Somebody who can have real conversations. They, they, they do have in, instances that are not human, and that would explain a lot of things. I in mean, what, I'm, I'm not. Case? This is just a theory, right? Again, again, again they always say <laughs> conspiracy theories or conspiracy theories <laughs> uh, up proved. until five, six years. But like, I've, I've seen <laughs> like the the weird part here where it clearly looks like it's a mask. So, For me, it just yeah. looks like an old person with a lot of like wrinkles, you know. I mean, he doesn't even look the same. If you, I'll put tell you why. I've, I've been he, around. It doesn't look like the same guy. Old people in you know, the last ten years. I mean, 
part of, <laughs> part of my career as an insurance agent, especially in the medical community, is just being around old people. Yeah. And you will see just old people. I mean, I've, I've seen everything. I mean, I've seen <laughs> uh, old people in like the worst cases where I've been to a house where it's like urine and feces everywhere. <laughs> and I've been to a house where the, the viejo está completamente, he's completely naked and he doesn't care. <laughs> you know, so I, that's what I'm saying. I really, it really feels more like, I don't think he's a perv or anything. I just think he's so seen now at this point. He doesn't know where the hell he's at. And then so he why is just, he present? Eh? Why is he present because in that there, state? Because there's people behind. I, I really think the way the government is right now, it's so dirty mm -hmm. that everybody has dirty laundry on everybody mm -hmm. for the most part. Mm -hmm. So if you're someone like Baden who's been in, in the government forever, do you don't think they have dirty laundry over you? Of course they do. And mm -hmm. so it's not that he wants to be president and stay there. You have no choice. You work for me. You do whatever mm -hmm. I tell you. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if you're beholden to somebody else like that, I mean, you're a puppet. Mm -hmm. You're going to do whatever mm -hmm. they want. So that's why I don't think right. for the so most part it's his like doing. So you think they're taking advantage of 100%. him? 100%. 100%. You know, it's I think if you would have been younger, right, mm -hmm. and he had been coherent, mm -hmm. yeah, you can blame everything on him. But at this point, it just feels like yeah. he's being kind of manipulated yeah. to do whatever, you know, yeah. whoever's controlling the yeah. White House. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. that's, ya that's siéntese, what it feels. señor. Ya siéntese. <laughs> you know? So <laughs> Go that, lay down, please. That's what it feels. And that's why they're attacking uh, <laughs> Trump so hard because Trump is a guy you can't control. You know? Mm -hmm. And that's why people are scared mm -hmm. of somebody like Trump. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you want, when you're very powerful, you want people to listen to you. Mm -hmm. And you want people to follow what you want. And when mm -hmm. you have somebody like that, it's it's very, very tough. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's just my my whole thing about it. I don't think he's a lizard person, you know. I mean. He, you never know, you know. <laughs> you I, I could be wrong. Point, at this point. At this point, we're so far removed from reality in, it's, in every concept Everything is of so life. dystopian nowadays that I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, really. Now, do, do you, I always wonder this. Do you think it's dystopian mm -hmm. now? Yeah. Because we have so much access to information or it's always been dystopian and we just didn't know any better. Oh, that's a great question. No, I think it's um, technology. Yeah. The access to constant information. I mean, it seems like the world is becoming like an open air asylum. Yeah. You know, and I don't think it was like that before. Before it was more... There were certain rules of behavior that were socially adopted that now are gone. So that's that's what it, it feels so hard to pick a side in, in any topic nowadays, mm -hmm. because if you go down the rabbit hole of anything, yeah, you're gonna uncover so many lies in anything in life. Yeah, you know, yeah. because I mean, before, politics, religion, anything, anything. I mean, mm -hmm. the the true darkness that exists in the world. Mm -hmm. is nowhere near uh, what we've been shown. No, but you know, it's starting really, to come up. And I ask you, mm -hmm. is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, this is what I believe, right? And you don't have to agree. Um, I think we're going through uh, an awakening as a society. But first, shit has to come up. First, we have to face our demons as as a collective, right? First, we have to face the darkness and everything that's been underneath covered. That's going to come up. And that's what we're seeing now. So it seems like, you know, it's so easy to lose hope because everything we're seeing. Um, having said that, I believe that eventually once it comes up, we have to do something about it. Like you were saying, like we're seeing this transgender degenerates doing things to kids. What are you going to do? Are you just going to sit down and... Pretend no, that's not, okay. I mean, I mean uh, we any, as a society. Anybody tries to do anything with my, my kids, I mean, they might as well kill this me This is now. <laughs> all coming up so we can do something about it. So that's why I believe. Um, I think we need to speak up. And that's why I have a podcast. And that's why I always encourage him to also speak. Because I'm like, if the the generados are out there, like, you know, um, spreading like wildfire we need to do something about it we can't just like sit and complain because that's being compliant and that, that that's why i believe women are are just as important or even not or even not more important than men uh in this particular culture war yeah. uh, and i'll why? tell you why i i think for the most part men just want to please women mm -hmm. and we just want to feel 
Validated. Useful. Yeah. Validated. <laughs> As we're opposed to, like, right now, it feels like mm-hmm. most of these problems, mm-hmm. and I'll, this is just Mostly my Mostly what? Most of the problems we're having yeah. right now in, in the U.S. and even some of the civilized countries, mm-hmm. in my opinion, yeah. has been caused by women. How because come? women want to be so tolerant. Women want to be mm-hmm. so accepting mm-hmm. that you end up leaving the bad guys into your backyard, mm-hmm. the problems, and now mm-hmm. we need to be saved. And mm-hmm. so what I, why I mean women like you are so important right mm-hmm. now, mm-hmm. You need, your voice needs to be louder right now. So then mm-hmm. you can rally the men mm-hmm. to defend what we should be defending. Yeah, yeah. Like giving them a pass, right? Like, yeah, do be- something. Because yeah. men, for the be most part, <laughs> unless it's logical, you're not going to convince me otherwise. Yeah. But women tend to be a, a lot more mm-hmm. uh, emotional, not from a dumb perspective, but from a compassionate perspective. Right, right. Like, and so you let shit slide through and then it's too late. Like that's what I'm saying. Like men in sports. I'm like, feminists did this to ourselves. It's so, it's so wrong. Um and that's why I said I've lost a couple of friends who can't see what I see. And I'm like, we have to take different paths because I'm not going to agree with what you're saying. And they will like send me articles like, oh, no, because they take hormones and then they are weaker. I'm like, that's it's not the same. That's, no. Tell your strongest woman friend to come wrestle with me. I, I will. I, Tell I her mean, I mean we, we don't talk anymore, but. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll see. And and, and it's not it's not from like a like a bad place. It's just. No, it's. It's, it's a reality. I mean, conversations need to be had. You have, you, I always tell us woman's strongest power is the power of persuasion. You can have the strongest, most powerful man in the world be made into rubble by yep. a woman's essence. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. I agree. I don't understand. It's almost like a pheromone that you guys have over us mm-hmm. where it's like. We can't help ourselves mm-hmm. up until the what I call the post not clarity, which is that five or ten minute period. Where we were like, wait, wait, what am I doing? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> and every guy will understand this, um, but for the most part, I, I feel like women have this power over men, and I think it's it's a it's like a God given power yeah. to equal things mm-hmm. out. Yeah. And we're physically stronger. Yeah. You know, you need something to be able to almost put us in a spell. You want to talk yeah. about witches? Yeah. You know, I, I That's really... That's feminine energy, what you're talking about. Yeah. And, and I, I feel so with my wife. Sometimes I'm like, <laughs> and I work with my wife, you know? And sometimes I'm like... <sighs> and she's like, Bobby, Maggie, whatever. I'm like, oh, God damn it. It worked. <laughs> you got me again. <laughs> you know, what are we doing? You know? I love that. <laughs> You know, and, and that's where I feel like that that's yeah. your greatest power. And, you know, we, yeah. we, we can't lose that. No. Because if you try to become a man, you're really losing your most powerful asset. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you fight with your men, this is why I always tell my girls, if you fight with your men, like you're also a man, your man is going to treat you like you're also a man. And you don't want that. I mean, <laughs> and you don't want, no, no, no. You, don't, you never want to equal in manhood because you're not a man. I mean, yeah. No, there is just, so much power in, in being subtle and soft spoken. At the same time, that doesn't mean that being feminine, it means like, oh, you're complexion to everything and you say yes to everything and you you keep quiet. That's not what feminine energy is. Actually, feminine energy is so wild. It's actually, and that's why men are so scared of it, right? It's like you love it, but at the same time, you're I scared. It. <laughs> no, I, 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 I'll say this. I both love and hate it because it's a thing. It's like, you like, never know. You, I can be so logical <laughs> up until that point. It's like, man, what the hell is going on? You know, oh, yeah. and you can't keep up. No. <laughs> and that's an issue. Um, but, anyways, switching off the topic, I, w- I wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, your root. I have this this story, and I'm gonna say it, it's the first time I publicly said it. Uh-huh. Um, Argentinians are a little crazy, and I'll tell you why. And I, I really think it's more your your pride, your national pride. Uh-huh. Argentinians have so much pride and passion that it also makes you guys a little crazy. Mm-hmm. I agree. So I had this employee of mine <laughs> who was an Argentinian, right? She worked for me for about six months. Normal boss relationship. Then one of one day, all of a sudden, I get this text. From her husband, her Mm -hmm. ex-husband, asking me why was I calling her his wife or his ex-wife? What's going on? I'm like, look, man, I don't want anything to do with you guys. That's up to you. Leave me alone. Mm -hmm. You think that was the end of it? All of a sudden, at 10 at night, he starts messaging my wife 
on Facebook. The thing is, I'm I'm extremely transparent with my wife. So mm-hmm. I had showed my wife, hey, look, you call me. What the fuck? This is weird. Showing you. So the, the- at 10 at night, he starts messaging my wife saying mm-hmm. I'm having an affair with his wife, right? Uh, that he has proof. <laughs> then he goes and messages uh, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law. The next day, oh, he calls God. up my whole company. He ends up uh, writing reviews. Uh, he ends up messaging my mother, my father, that I was having an affair. He basically blew up my phone and had my wife, who was pregnant at the time, worried because he was threatening to do something when I never even did anything with his wife. I mean, it was like perplexing. Mm-hmm. And he did this for like a whole month. I had to call the cops. Mm-hmm. You know, I had filed reports against this guy. Mm-hmm. And she, like we, you know, we stopped working together because she was so embarrassed. She's like, this is fucking crazy. Yeah. It got to a point where like I, I had to arm myself mm-hmm. thinking this guy's going to show up at my house anytime. And and I, I don't know if this is an Argentinian thing or not, but it's like I haven't had good, uh, you know, experience in Argentina, yeah. especially with that. That was like the most chaotic, random shit that's ever happened in my life. It was like, you know what? Lewis, you do you do everything so well, but today and for the next three weeks, we're just gonna throw this random crazy guy at you, you know, that he he is a hundred percent sure you're cheating with his wife. You know, so <laughs> I ask, you know, is this like a normal routine no. thing where it's like like men are like that or something? No. Okay. No. My experience. I, I think I think that was like a mental problem issue there yeah he was definitely crazy no that's not normal not in argentina and anywhere i mean that's psycho well that, that's my experience argentina so i mean uh, uh, obviously after this you know it's changing messy? my perspective messy messy makes everything worthwhile <laughs> see it's you not know, everything to, so bad. to my employee if she ever watches this i mean i never had anything against her she she was right. a good employee no, no. um no, I man i never even looked at her even what i don't i I always say this, I never look at anybody I work with or anybody I interact with in a professional setting in any mm-hmm. sexual way. It yeah. just doesn't exist mm-hmm. in my mind, yeah. you know, yeah. because you can. we're not there for that, mm-hmm. you know, and this is just like the curveball of life. <laughs> Testing my patience. It was, so, it was, it was crazy. You need to have some fun. <laughs> No, it was not fun. My my wife at one point it was a no, Saturday. It I sounds was playing horrible. golf, it sounds horrible. and I had to run back home because she was paranoid and freaked out, and she was like eight months pregnant at the time. Wow, you know, because this guy kept contacting all her family members. Oh my god, you know, and Such saying that he had proof that I went to the beach and had sex with her. Oh my when god, when really those pictures and the beach, I was there with my wife and my kids. So I was like, bro, what the hell are you talking about? <gasps> Have you ever seen him like in real life? No, and I think if he ever did, he would die, you know, <laughs> respectfully, you know, because the way, the way he did that yeah. and the, the stress, you know, I'm, I'm yeah. one of these people where, you know, I never wanted to get into any physical altercation with anybody. Yeah, like, yeah. I just, that's not who I am. Mm-hmm. I don't want to mm-hmm. fight anybody. Mm-hmm. But if you threaten me mm-hmm. and we get into a fight, <laughs> be ready to die, you know, because it, it just... <laughs> I feel like that's what we're talking about, the masculine energy. Yeah, yeah. You know, when you know there's real consequences, mm-hmm. you're not going to go touch that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where this country used to be at, yeah. where we used to be the, that that place where we carry that big stick, so don't fuck with mm-hmm. us. You know? Because yeah. we now hit it's gone. you. Have you seen men recently? I mean, so feminine. And yes and no. We, I we, really do think it's also the news. Because I, I've seen yes. a Have lot. Have you seen Bad Bunny? I mean, wearing skirts and all of these reggaetoneros wearing skirts. I have, I have and my own opinion of Bad Bunny. Wearing blush and lip gloss. and. I just don't want to insult Puerto Ricans because he, <laughs> he's like a national treasure to them, you know? He he doesn't claim him. Uh, you don't claim him, but I feel like Bad Bunny is like a national treasure Puerto Rican just because uh, really? we just kind of put them on the map, you know? Yeah. If if you think about Puerto Rico right now, you think about uh, you know Bad Bunny. Mm-hmm. You think about Daddy these Yankee. people, Daddy Yankee. You think about these people who've made the music industry. But Bad Bunny has kind of gone into like the pervasive side, where it's no longer about music. Now it's about the stunts. It's about kissing dudes. It's about like doing this gay it's stuff agenda. on the side. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, bro, what are you like? Can you decide? You he's, know, he's a puppet. A hundred percent, and. Th- but again, I, I don't the really. F- I don't team. feel like men want that. 
And I can tell you this from my personal experience, the men around my life, you know, they're, they're kind of already fed up with the crap. Yeah. You know? Me too. And for me, it's reinforcing, man, just keep working. Mm-hmm. You know, believe in who you are. Yeah. You know, work out, yeah. eat right. Stand, and I, stand and in I, your and power. I promise you yeah. the time will come when that's going to be needed. I'm, you know? Right now. It is coming. I promise you. There's a statistic that young men right now in the U.S. Mm-hmm. are more conservative than ever. I love that. You know, because the way the world works is if you push too much on one side, yeah. you will inevitably create yep. the other one. Yeah. It's like that yin-yang effect, you yeah. know. So they keep pushing this crap. Mm-hmm. You're just going to make more of the other. Yeah. Eventually, it's going to show. What's and then we'll have underneath. the opposite effect. We'll be now too manly. And then it's, you know, it's it, that's life. It's like the... The I mean, back and we're forth. just trying to find a good balance, I think. That's what we should strive for. Not all masculine and, you know, you have to keep pushing and women have to act this way in order to be successful. I think we need to find a good balance where we can both coexist and thrive. Because my power is not your power, right? Like you said, you're physically stronger. We are more intuitive. That's my superpower. Your superpower might be fighting. I know. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm okay I, I know. fighting. <laughs> I'm not a fighter, guys, okay? I have actually <laughs> trained against real fighters, and they will kill me, literally. You know, I actually have— But, but uh, you do love exercising, right? And I love it. Lifting I, heavy things. Not even lifting heavy things. I really think exercising for men is a way to self-fulfill yourself. Yeah. Where you feel like you accomplished something, you know, yeah. and—, and when you do something hard and you can validate to yourself that you were mm-hmm. able to get through it, yeah, it just gives you confidence to keep so moving mean, forward. Also, if you are the protector, you need to have a minimum strength. How are you going to protect me? Guns. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the American so way. You're guns. just like super fast. I mean, like you can even run. Uh, like uh, no, full no. consent. I'm not like a like a gun store. You know, I don't have a million guns and like that. Sorry, but, that guy. Huh? Florida guy. Florida guy. Florida. <laughs> um, I'm I'm the last thing from the what people say is a basic Florida man, which I also think is almost like an insult. The basic Florida man is actually a hardworking dude. You know, they just want to be left alone. I know a lot of white Americans who they're called Florida people, and they're just regular nice dudes mm-hmm. who just have regular jobs. Yeah, and they just want to be left alone. And if you're gonna mess with them, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. It's like you're gonna have a problem. Mm-hmm. You know, we have the right to defend ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, I think. But yeah, I don't like the Florida man thing. The Florida man thing, I think it's it's a it's like a way to use it to uh, end the debate. You know, just mm-hmm. like you're dumb, I'm not gonna talk to you. Mm-hmm. You know, and I always think that that just leads to more problems. Mm-hmm. So any anything you wanna, um, I guess, finish on or any message you wanna give out. Um, mm-hmm. Or in particular, well, the project you're talking about that, that you're yeah, you're so, doing right now. Yeah, so I'm trying to just be a voice for women who want to explore and nurture their feminine energy and just reclaim that because we've lost that and we've gone too far on the swing to the masculine side. And I think that's why we are chronically stressed out and just burn out like i know so many women who are just burned out it's too much it really much. is i mean I, I see it with my wife all the time and mm-hmm. i'm not i'm a masculine guy but i'll pick up to myself my mm-hmm. kids are, they all have to pick up their own plates they yeah. all have to do their own beds yeah they'll have to put she their laundry help. away yeah um and i and i feel like it's that you know it's mm-hmm. it's it's like having two jobs uh, the whole time and at the mm-hmm. same time you have to be submissive to a masculine man. it's tough i get it I get that. How do you like switch back and forth? Like, oh, at work and I'm driving and I'm picking up this and I'm picking up my kids and then I'm trying to, uh, you know, like earn more money. And then you have to come home and be like, oh, yes, my love. What do you know? It's it's so hard because like it's hard to switch on and off. Right. It's like two different people. And I used to have that when I was working a lot. I was so reactive and I was always in a bad mood and I was always exhausted and I wasn't my best version with my husband and you know that sucked and um now that I'm actually 
you know, nurturing this side of my feminine energy, I'm so much more happier. And this is my message. Like if you're a woman, please, please, please try to connect with your, with your essence, because that's why you were born with a womb, not to be a man. Well, thank you so much. I, I really do think that that message not only needs to be, you know, um, heard more, it needs to be, you know, something principle for the world to hear. Right. Um, so thank you so much for coming. You know, I, I hope, you know, I get to be a part of, uh, of you uh, as a guest in yeah. your podcast. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, any, any anything you guys want to leave here, any comments, any questions, mm -hmm. we'll also leave the link for her channel yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, again, we're small right now, but again, the message is important and the movement yeah. is too. Uh, if it takes me 20 years to get this message out, if it takes me 40 years to get it out, we're going to keep doing it. Mm. Yeah. Um, because this is the only way to move forward in life, have real conversations and stand up for the values that we know are needed in, in, in you know, in the world and world. life. Yeah. Um, maybe back then was more, uh, equal rights. I think right now it's just more common sense. You know, we need, we need to be a little more <laughs> common sense, you know? Yeah. Um, and hopefully I the agree. people who are on the other side or have the counter argument, I really want to pose this statement. Let's not make each other the enemies. We're not the mm -hmm. enemy. No. You are not the enemy. No. Okay. We have disagreements. Yeah. Somebody else is benefiting from this war, yeah, from this absolutely. culture war. Yeah. Like and, we said and before. And just by yeah. fighting this, this way, mm -hmm. you're just feeding into it even more. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. I invite anybody who wants to that disagrees with me yeah. or Annie to come yeah. into one of our, our, of our shows. Yeah. And we will be more than happy to have a real discussion and hopefully yeah. we can meet somewhere in the middle. Yeah. And if you're a woman and you want to be coached into how to live a more fulfilled, soulful, soft life, please come to my coaching. I would love to have you. <laughs> well, definitely be, that'll definitely be a good thing. <laughs> yeah. So thank you, Annie. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. As always, a pleasure to, to meet you guys. Yeah. And hopefully we can do it some more. Yeah. Adiós a los degenerados. Adiós. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good one. Yeah. <laughs>